Hello, 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 and welcome to this edition of A Quick Pint. Now, today I would like to talk about our former Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, and the corruption scandal in which he is embroiled, which I see as really just a marker of the decline of our civilization. At this stage in civilization, things basically get like this, which is that they get highly corrupt. Um, I did a video a while ago where I looked at a our first uh, acknowledged Prime Minister, Robert Walpole, and how it was an occupational hazard in the 18th century and the 17th century of politics that you would end up in prison. If, you're, uh, if the opposition came to power, uh, then they would, of course, punish the outgoing government, they would prosecute them, they would send them to jail, uh, whatever. Jail was an, uh, an occupational hazard of being a politician at the time. Why is that the case? Well, at that time, uh, probably the average intelligence of society was, uh, at least at the genetic level, was rather higher than it is today. And intelligence, as I will look at in a minute, militates against corruption. But mortality salience was much higher. Uh, the, the, the people were surrounded by death all the time. And what uh, mortality salience does is it basically elevates groupishness. It makes people more likely to divide into groups, to divide into cliques, to only care about those that are part of their small little clique, because that's how you survive in a situation of high mortality salience. You have to get on with people, you have to bond with people, you have to cooperate with people. Um, and so... And you have to basically avoid being with people uh, that, that, that are outsiders, that are different from you, that might give you disease. And so the result of that is that you end up being, uh, you know, looking after your in-group, but, but basically being corrupt, be, being prepared to do anything to get ahead with regard to anybody that you do not see in your in-group. And so this militates against being able to form a large, complex polity based around social trust. And it militates against democracy, because what democracy involves is a balance between trust and distrust. If you are too high in trust, then you don't question your leaders, you don't hold them to account, you accept everything they're doing at face value. But if, but if democracy, uh, it, so therefore you can't be too trusting. But similarly, you can't be too untrusting because the whole idea of democracy is that you accept that you have lost the election and there is a peaceful transfer of power to another group of people that have slightly different ideas from you and you have to accept that they are not going to come in and persecute you and purge you and whatever. And equally, the other side has to accept that you are not going to do the same. So this means that to have a functioning democracy, you have to have a certain level of relatively high social trust and you have to accept that both sides are ultimately good people who ultimately have um, the good of the country uh, as their fundamental goal, but they disagree on how to achieve this. This is absolutely vital. And if trust falls so low that that is no longer believed, if polarisation becomes so extreme that, that is no longer believed, and that's what the case was in the 18th century, uh, then of course you end up with politics being a particularly dirty game where you will be imprisoned if, if, the, if the other side get in, where there will be intense corruption to try to stop the other side winning, where there will be vote, vote rigging, where there will be all kinds of stuff. Democracy can't function with low social trust and mortality salience brings about low social trust. Now, what we are seeing now, and as I have looked at in many videos, is the decline in intelligence. Um, we've got numerous markers of this now, these so-called Woodley effects. We've lost the equivalent of 15 IQ points based on reaction times between uh, 1880 and the year 2000. We know this is happening for genetic reasons and there's just so much as I look at in my book, At Our Wits End, Why We're Becoming Less Intelligent, What It Means to the Future, and in my new book, Breeding the Human Herd, of the evidence that we are declining in intelligence. Now, what that is going to mean is a gradual collapse in social trust and therefore a collapse in oh, for, I've, I've got apps these days people are into the apps in my life it's a terrible terrible thing anyway um so um so you you, you will get this collapse in intelligence and how will this manifest well intelligence is associated with cooperation intelligence is associated with high trust uh, because if you're low in trust, you might as well trust nobody. But if you're low in intelligence, you might trust nobody. But if you're high in intelligence, then you you can perceive who you should and shouldn't trust and make decisions accordingly. Um, intelligence is associated with generally being kind and empathetic and seeing the good in people. Intelligence is associated with being against corruption because you can you're more future oriented and so you can see the negative consequences in the future 
of corruption and therefore the whole of society and therefore you don't engage in it. Um, and, and, and so all of these things will start to decline in a society of declining intelligence quotient. And so what you will get is limited social trust. What you will get is polarisation as people subdivide into ever smaller and smaller groups, only feeling able to trust those that are very, very, very similar to themselves, not feeling able to trust those that are more different from themselves because that, that they're just not high enough in trust to be able to do that and because they will see them as fundamentally different. What you'll get is general nastiness and vindictiveness and hatred and loathing of those that are different from you. What you will get is political corruption because people will be too stupid to be able to avoid the lure of, of corruption. And what you will get ultimately is the debasement of democracy and the, an attempt to destroy the opposition. Now, what do we see with Boris Johnson? Whether he lied to Parliament or not, I don't, is not relevant. What, in a way it's not, what do we actually see? We see that the woman who was allowed to investigate his so-called dishonesty and come to the conclusion that he was dishonest, Sue Gray, has immediately gone and got a job working for the opposition, working for the Labour Party, working for the very group whose job it is to try and bring Boris Johnson down. The very person who needed to be the impartial judge of this situation can surely be understood at, very, at the very least to be some kind of Labour Party sympathiser, in so much as I could never, ever bring myself to work for the Labour Party, because as far as I am concerned, they are evil. But this person must be some kind of Labour sympathiser, and she was the person who investigated Boris Johnson, the leader of the Conservative Party, the hated leader of the Conservative Party, the person who brought about Brexit, um, this being the thing that all of Labour and most of the Conservatives were strongly, strongly against. Clearly, that is corruption. Then the committee that investigated uh, Boris Johnson, based on Sue Gray's findings, is chaired by Harriet Harman. Who is Harriet Harman? She was the deputy leader of the Labour Party for a very, very long time, under Gordon Brown when he was Prime Minister and under Ed Miliband. She was a senior member of the Cabinet um, under Tony Blair. She is new Labour through and through. She is pro, she's against Brexit through and through. She's anti-Boris through and through. She's anti the Conservative Party. She hates the Conservative Party and people like Boris Johnson. And she is chairing the committee. That is corruption. And that is exactly the kind of thing that would have happened if you lost an election in about 1710. Then you would have a committee. And whether the committee is dominated by the Conservative Party is irrelevant because not all of the Conservative Party are in favour of Brexit. And in fact, it was lots and lots of Conservative MPs, including uh, the Speaker, John Burko, who tried to get together to corruptly block Brexit, to undermine democracy, to subvert the democratic will of the British people and stop Brexit on the grounds that, oh, the British people didn't understand what they were voting for or, or, or some other spurious um, explanation, some other, some other spurious justification for their behaviour. So it is corruption. And clearly Boris Johnson, I, whether he's guilty or not, I don't, he may well be guilty. He may well have lied to Parliament. It's not the point. The point is that he has been found guilty by an investigator who we have every reason to think is corrupt, and by a committee who, by virtue of its chairman, we would have every reason to think is corrupt. He may well be guilty, but he has clearly not been subject to a fair trial, to a fair process, to a fair investigation. And therefore he has resigned, rather than have to face their punishment and acknowledge um, uh, their dominance, he has chosen to resign his seat and cause a by-election and two other allies of his have done the same. But we shouldn't be surprised by this. This is what happens in a society of declining intelligence quotient. Democracy is debased. 
intelligence is associated with believing in democracy, with participating in democracy, with having democratic burger values, with high cooperation, with, with cooperating with your political opponents, with not seeing your political opponents even as opponents, but perhaps just seeing them as people that have uh, you know, di different views, uh, b b but sometimes you can cooperate with them and whatever. That's what, that's what happens in a society of high intelligence quotient. In a society of collapsing intelligence quotient or a society of rising mortality salience, these things break down and we reduce down into warring microcosms. And that, I'm afraid, is exactly what we are seeing with this corrupt new labour coup um, against uh, a certain segment within the Conservative Party that managed to deliver Brexit. Hello, hello, hello! The Jolly Heretic is an online public house which meets on Mondays and Thursdays at 7pm UK time, 2pm New York, in which we discuss the kind of based, fearless science which is increasingly expunged from our woke, joke universities. If you would like to help the Jolly Heretic public house, and there are many ways you can do so, please, please, please become one of my patrons on Subscribestar. Also, if you want to, you can donate to the channel uh, using Odyssey and Entropy, and you can also purchase Jolly Heretic merchandise, such as uh, shirts and and mugs. All of the links are in the description. Again, I'd be most violently grateful if you could assist the Jolly Heretic Public House, and I will see you all soon, and goodbye!